Hello, welcome to E-Teachers 365, where education and culture meet. My name is Elaine Johnson, wife, mother, educator, activist, master storyteller. I'm so excited to be here at Daydream Creative Studios with my bro, Najee Grant, and I'm here to talk to you about the do's and don'ts of Black History Month, updated 2023. So just as a refresher, uh, the do's and don'ts of Black History Month, it's so important that as you're planning your lessons, as you're picking up stories, as you're trying to decide what should my children or students know during this time, please, as a mother and as an educator, one of the most trying times is wondering what is someone going to teach my child? What is someone going to say to my child about who they are and where they come from? And I'm asking you, as you're planning lessons and you're choosing stories, to come from a place of love, come from a place of truth, come from a place of joy. We want to make sure that children in your class, when they're learning about black history and sometimes just American history, that when they leave that classroom, they don't feel sad, they don't feel broken, they don't feel traumatized. Because in this country, there is a history of telling these stories in a way that makes those of us with melanin and people of color feel broken, not feel seen. And so the onus, in my opinion, is for educators and parents alike to choose stories that uplift, that speak to resilience, that speak to the revolts, and that speak to us as a people who resisted. Did you know that there's a theme every year for Black History Month? This year, the theme for 2023 is resistance. We fought back. We fought back intellectually. We fought back with our hands, with weapons, we fought back. And oftentimes it's as though people don't wanna share that part of the story. But I can tell you as an African-American educator and mother, when I grew up learning about enslaved Africans, that's what I heard first, that we fought back, that we did not come here um, lightly. And so if you choose to talk about enslaved Africans, please be sure to include the resistance the revolts and the resilience because we're still here. Um, it's important that as we share these stories up for Black History Month, we want to talk about the past, right? We want to talk about the things that happened in America. And that history is hard. It's hard as an educator, it's hard as a parent, it's hard for the students in the classroom. When I am teaching my third graders hard history, it doesn't make me not teach it. It just makes me be more intentional about saying this was something that happened in the past, but it's important that we learn about it today because we wanna make better choices in our lives. I wanna make sure that when I teach my students about black history, that I tell them about people who were scientists, that I tell them about the people who are inventors, that I tell them about people who were brave, black, and first, right? We want to make sure that the children in your classroom feel empowered, right? We want to make sure the children in your classroom feel as though they can do and accomplish anything. I always start with, we are 99.9% .9 alike, right? We're 99.9% .9 alike. That melanin, the amount of melanin in our skin is never the problem. and It was never the issue. The problem is white supremacy and racism. That's the problem. There are often times you're going to read in a book and it'll say, because they were black, because they were black, because of his brown skin. I, if you don't do anything else, this Black History Month, or your time as an educator, or your time as a parent, if you don't do anything else, if you see the phrase, if you hear it, please re recognize it and say, no, it is never the, thought, the fault of the melanin or the amount of melanin in someone's skin. It's the fault of the racist person or the racist law. That is important to say explicitly. I make sure I say it to my own children and I also say it to the students in my classroom. So as you're thinking about what should I do for Black History Month, like I, I, you don't have to be nervous, right, about teaching about Rosa Parks. Teach about it all though, right? Teach about everything. Teach about Claudette Colvin who came before Rosa Parks. Teach about all of the people involved in the movement in order to make that Montgomery bus boycott happen. Think about and teach about the people who are here today, 
the fact that now there are schools that are integrated. Think about all of the things. Do not just focus on the past, although it's Black History Month. Try to make sure that we also think about the future. Think about the fact that we are still here today. Think about the fact that we have books that we can share and bring into our classroom and highlight the living, breathing, joyful children that we are today. Think about how we can incorporate authors and illustrators who highlight black joy, who highlight black girl magic. Those are the type of stories that I want my children to hear. I want them to know that there was a hard history. There were some terrible things that happened in this country. But above all else, I want my students and my children to know that the African American community is strong, that we are resilient, that we are brave, that we are here, and that those people who came before us led the way for us to be engineers and scientists and doctors and lawyers and all of those things that happened in the past, it happened, but now look to the future for who you can be, right? The past and the the past is the past, but the future is how we can make sure that our children, when they leave your classroom, when they leave that lesson, they feel empowered, they feel bold, they feel brave, they feel seen, they feel heard, but not traumatized. So think about it. How are you going to teach black history this year? E-Teachers 365 for Education and Culture Meet.